I'll show you the, the data that I want to manipulate. Here is the very simple file, hero file, and it has five objects. Each object has these four properties, ID, name, hero type, and a code. So my goal is to be able to list the contents of this file and then be able to add a new entry in the file, update an existing entry, or delete. And these programming tasks are very, very common in web applications, data-driven web applications. You will find yourself dealing with a collection of objects, either listing them, searching through them, or adding or updating or deleting. So let me show you the final product and then walk through how we achieve it. And this is what you expected from you in your homework. So I run this program, and the app is, you can think of it as the main. This is the entry point of the server. So I start the server, the server starts listening on this port 80, 9080. I go and visit that URL, and then I'll go to, let me go to hero.html. So hero.html looks like this when I first load the application. Um, I have the entries that you saw in that file are brought along and displayed in a table. And then there are actions that you can do against those items. Either show the details or edit the details or delete the whole entry. You can also add a new one. That's basically what, what we want to achieve. And you can see it's all fully working. If I click any of them, I get the details. If I, let's say, delete, uh, edit, I can change, for example, this to submit. If I go here, it is changed, and so on. I, I can add a new one. Let's say, let's say, okay. and the type, no, type, and submit, okay? This is added here, and I can see the details, and I can edit, and I can delete, okay? So all fully working, and similar thing you need to do in the lab, practice it on your, by yourself, practice it, and then apply it to your project, apply it to your, uh, to your homework first, then your projects, then midterm, and so on. This is the fundamental skill because in most applications, you, oh, long time, haven't seen you. Okay, uh, for most applications, you will find yourself doing this. Getting, adding, updating, deleting. Uh, is, this, uh, is the scenarios clear, what we want to achieve? For the get, we already seen it. I want to focus in this lecture on, on how do I add, how do I update, and how do I delete, okay? so. It all starts, this is one way uh, I recommend for you to, what I recommend is you start with the repository. So repository is a class, it's basically a pattern. A pat there is a design pattern called repository, which says to us, if you want to deal with some data source, you want to read or write to a data source, you better put all the code that deals with that data source in a, in a separate class and call that class a repository. So when you, whenever you hear a repository, what does that mean? Yes. It's a class that does what? Interacts with the data source. In our case, what is the data source? The JSON file. And later on, it will, become, it will become a database later on. Um, and this is the good thing. If you put it in a repository, and then the rest of the application deals with the repository. If you change your, if, if you change your data source to, to another data source, let's say uh, a database or another service, you, you just change the repository. The rest of the application is isolated from the, that change. And this is exactly what we will do, inshallah, after the break. After the break, we will drop the files and start using databases.
Yes. You use the repository to change the implementation. So when, when in your in the homework three, for example, nothing will change. Everything will remain the same. The only thing you will do change the repository to talk to a database instead of talking to a file, to a JSON file. So that's why we use the repository. And plus you have that encapsulation. All the logic to do with the reading and the writing data is centralized and managed in one file, okay? So here is the file, I call it hero repository. And usually the, the way you name the file, the way you name it, you name it the same way as the, the name of the object you are manipulating with, with, the, with, the, with the postfix repository. Hero repository, uh, contact repository, student repository. That's how we name it. So it is a class. So to create a class in, in uh, JavaScript, exactly the same as in Java, you see class and the, and the class name. This is the constructor. When the class is created, I want to create this variable called fs. Uh, I'll, bring in, I'll bring in the file, uh, the fs library that comes with Node.js and put it in this variable, and I will use that, this fs to read and write, okay? And here I have all the files that will help me, uh, sorry, all the functions to read and write to a, to a database, uh, sorry, to a file. So we already seen this, you already practiced it. Um, now, let me show you here, I have all my methods. Here I have git heroes, it, get, it gets them all, it reads them all, and returns a promise. I, this I already explained, like everything is asynchronous. I don't wait for, I, when I say re, give me the heroes, I don't wait for, for, you, for this function to give it to me. It, the function will return me a promise, and when it is fulfilled, I can carry on with other with other uh, with other tasks. Uh, this one is getting one particular hero by ID. So it's, it is exactly the same as getting all the heroes, but I will filter filter only the one that you are looking for. Okay. Now, for add for add because we are dealing with files. The easiest way to add, I read all, have a look at this. I read all the, the whole file, and then I find out what is the maximum ID that I have used in this file. A simpler way, I could have gone to the last element of the array, get the ID, and add one. There are many ways to, to know what is the last ID, because you need to generate the ID of the new item that you are, you are putting. Then, I take my new hero that I want to add, I push it to the array, and then save the array back to the file. That's it, this is how I add. Is this one clear? Okay, now for updates, similar, I read all the heroes, and then I loop through, I loop through them. Once I find the hero I am looking for, I update it, replace it basically, replace the element of the array. I don't need to continue looking I break from the loop, and then I save the heroes into the, into the file. Okay, so this is straightforward. And delete, exactly the same. I read all of them, look for the one I want, and go ahead and delete it using splice. This is a, a function in JavaScript to delete from an array. And then my array now has the element deleted, and I go ahead and Say, save the file, sorry, save the, save the file, okay? Is the repository clear? This has nothing to do with web development or anything. It's just Java, plain JavaScript to read and write to a file. Now, now once I have this repository, before I move, I move forward, before I move forward, I really need to test it. Make sure every function, whenever I write a function, test it to make sure it works. So I might create another repository test file to test, to test my repository. By the way, when I finish, when I finish with my repository, my repository is a class. Can you see it here? So to make this class available in another file, I export it, I exp and to make it easier for the, imp for, the for the other files to import mine, 
I just export an instance. I could have export the whole class, but in here I'm just exporting an instance. So I can import it in another file and make use of it. So don't forget to always export from your, to export your repository. And this, this is how you use it. You go to another JavaScript file and you import it using a require. When you import it, what do you have in this repository, hero repository, what do we have? An object of type contact repository, and I can start calling the function. And you, of course, you get IntelliSense, as you, uh, as you see here, when you do this, get, you get all the IntelliSense uh, you, from, uh, from the WebStorm tool. So if you need to test everyone. I'm not testing everyone here, but I'm testing these two, the read, uh, read all and read one. So I right click and run. And you can see all the information is coming nicely. Okay, so now the next step is to make this repository accessible through the web. So to do this, I create a, an express app. Uh, those of you who are not here, maybe you have not seen this. So uh, Node.js, as you know, is a runtime, is a Java runtime. It understands how to run JavaScript. On top of Node.js, you can build a web server. Uh, and to make it easier, you can, you can build a web server using Node.js itself. But there is a very famous library that comes on top of Node.js called Express. And this Express allows me to very easily build a web server on top of Node.js. So if you want to use Express, of course, you have to go ahead and install it. So you will do npm install express dash dash save. And I explained what this, all this means. When I do this, you will, uh, this will be, this will download the express and also add an entry to this package.json. If you remember this package.json, you have the dependencies. But for you, when you download my, pro sorry, when you download this project from GitHub, you don't need to do all of this. Just do npm install. When you do npm install, npm will go through this package.json and it will install these three libraries that I have here. Okay, so the first thing you do when you download the project, what you should do is npm install. And then to start the web server, you go to this app.js, right click and run it. And it will start listening on a particular port. It's already listening here. Oh, sorry, let me run it. It, wa it will start listening on port 8090. I decided the port. So here is the app.js. I'm not going to go through really all of it. I'm just, I will ex import the express library, put it in this express folder, uh, sorry, express variable. Create an, in, create an app based on it. This is my web application, uh, well, my web server. My web server is all in this little variable called app. And then I start configuring my routes. I start configuring my routes. I'm saying if somebody comes to slash API slash heroes, I want you to, ri to run this function. If somebody comes to slash heroes slash particular ID, I want you to run this function. So I am mapping a URL to function call. That, that's basically the programming model. Because a web server is nothing but a piece of software that is able to receive requests, web requests, either get requests or posts or put at certain URL and respond, do some action to respond to that request, okay? so. You have two options. You can put all your code here like this, have a look. You can put all your code here. Let's say, for example, if somebody comes to slash about, uh, let's try it just to show you. If somebody comes to slash about, that function will be called and you get this result. Yes, uh, this handcrafted HTML. 
Or let's say somebody comes to slash students. Have a look at this. If somebody's come to API slash students, I go ahead, call the repository, and get all the students and send them back. Now, if you, tr if you start doing this, you will, this file will quickly be kilometers, it quickly have a lot of code. So it's better to grab this event, uh, this uh, route handler or this URL handler and put it in a separate class just to keep things organized. Um, so this class, for me, I called it hero controller in my, in my case. So for example, if somebody asks for API slash heroes, I'll show you first what I mean. If I go here and say API slash heroes. Yeah, yes, thank you. I will, I went to the repository, grabbed all the heroes and send them back. Now, to, uh, instead of writing this style, putting the, the, uh, event, uh, the route handler in this app.js, yeah, I put it in a separate file, okay? And I call that one hero controller. I might put another one called student controller, just to keep things organized. So when somebody asks for API that, that hero, heroes, I basically hand it over to this controller, to this particular method called get heroes. I go there, and that get heroes, all it does, it hands it over to the repository. So the repository is not aware of the web. So be careful. Repository, it just knows how to read and write to a file. The controller is the one that connects, connects the, the, yes, the router or the URL with this function call. So, so you, get the, you get the idea. I have the app that defines the routes or the URLs that I have in my application. And I have the controller that handles the request. And when it handles it, it, it relies on the repository class to read and write from the file. It's just a matter of organizing. Of course, I can put all of this code in the app.js. But you know, uh, as things get complicated, it's better to be modular and to keep things organized. OK? So now if someone comes to API slash heroes slash a particular hero. They are not interested to get all of them. They're just interested to get the hero with ID one. So they pass the parameter as a part of the URL, and I get that particular hero, not all of them. And the way we do that, have a look at this, get hero. I go to the request object, this is a built-in object that express handover to my, to my method. And in, that, in this request object, there is a property called params, and this gives me access to the ID that was passed as part of the URL. And then I call the repository and get the hero that the user have asked for, and then return it as JSON. It is clear? Okay, now here is the post. Let me show you the post. Now someone now wants to, ha they have a hero at their hand as an object, and they throw it to the server, say, please push this to the file, add it to the file. So here, these two, the, the HTTP verb that was used is the get verb. But when we, are, when we want to add something, we usually send it using a post request. And it will come to this URL, and then when, when, the, when the request comes to this URL, this method will handle that request. So let's have a look at that method, add hero, okay? So that method, the object, the object that the user have sent as part of the post request, it is already in request.body. Okay, I grab that body. In the body, I will have a JSON object representing the new hero that I want to add. And then I go to my repository and say, please add that hero. And because this one is a, 
is a promise. I do it then when it's all finished. I will go. Ba I will give you back a status code saying 201 created. Remember the explanation of HTTP protocol. There is a get request and there is a response. Yes. The response always you send the status. 200 OK, everything fine. 201 created, 404 not found, 500 internal error, and so on. There are other, other status codes. So if everything goes OK, I will tell you 201. And also, I will tell you the URL of the, new, the newly created resource. Sorry? No, look, no, usually, usually, look, usually in most cases, we have some kind of collection. We have a resource, okay? So on the web, on the server side, the server side provide resources. This is a very generic term. It means it could be anything. It could be a file, it could be an image, a video, JSON file, whatever it might be. But in here, what we're dealing with in this scenario we're looking at, a resource is basically a collection of objects. Okay? Each object in that collection has a, a unique URL. Remember the hero slash? So here, here is the whole collection. Have a look. Here is the whole collection. Each element in this collection is also addressable. I can get three or four. Now, when I add a new item to the a new item to the collection, it will have its own URL. Yes. So you, you it say this is for peace of mind. Here is the here is the URL of the newly created element. You, you get the idea. This is a very common pattern. In the HTTP, you never as a good programmer, of course. You should never leave your requester in the dark. You should always give them very clear status of their request. 200 OK. Here, when we create, 200 OK could have been good enough. But, but HTTP is more precise. When you create a new item in a collection, what should you return? 201. And another header in the response should be Location. There's a header defined in HTTP protocol called location. What do you put in the location? The URL of the newly created element. You get the idea? That is the power of this. So now, is clear the ad the using post? Now we want to test it. Remember, every step I test. I tested my repository, it's working. After I wrap it, in, in, in the express and make it a, a web application, I also test. Now I tested the get using plain browser, no problem. But now I want to test, test the post, post request. How can I test it? Very good, so how can I do it? Because in here I can do get, no problem. I can type in the URL and hit enter. For post, for post, I have to create an object and send it off to the client side, to the server side. No, we cannot do this because the, when you type something, it's a GET request. No, no, all of those are GETs. Are you following the scenario? What, what are we trying to do? Here it is. Uh, I want to. Sh I want first that you understand my question. What I am asking. So I, we want to test. Sorry, here it is. We want to test this this your this path or this route. Okay, and this one, which verb are we using? Post, and it is expecting an object, hero object, in the body of the request. Now, plain browser, I cannot do post, and I have no facility to put the object in the body of the request. So the only way to test it, I have to write an HTML page with a form where I type in the data and then press the submit. And then when I submit, what will happen? I submit it and do a post. 
But luckily, I don't need to do that for testing purposes. There is a plugin called, there's a plugin called uh, Postman. You just go Chrome Postman plugin. And this very, very useful plugin. It allows me to test these REST services. By the way, uh, just n n not to let the terminology confuse you, uh, these are these are basically called the REST, REST services or web API because I'm creating a remotely accessible functionality and this is a base, an API, a pro application programming interface. So if I want to test this without writing any client, I can use this plugin called Postman. So let us first use it for to test our, our GET request. Here is GET request and I get exactly the same information. And I can get one particular one. Let's say six, which doesn't exist, not found. So I get 404, can you see here 404? If I do three. All right, so let me copy this one. And now I will do a post request. And I want to create a new one. So I'm sending a post request to this URL and here is the body of the request. Because I don't know the ID when I create a new one. Remember, this is a new ID. The ID, who generates the ID? The server side. So let us just assume it's the same, same hero. And then, very important, I have to tell the server what is the, what is the data type of the body. So I add this standard HTTP uh, header called content type. And the content type is application slash JSON. This is very, very important. When I send something to the server, I have to tell the server what is the type. It's like a data type. Is it XML? Is it JSON? Is it text? Is it a comma delimited? What is it? So what I am sending to the server on the, on the body of the request, what I am sending? JSON. So I go and add this header, content type, application.json. There are other content types that you can choose from, but we, we don't care too much about them at this stage. The most important one is application.json. Okay, so now we are ready to send our request. Here is the body, here is the URL, here is the verb. You see here, I, I am able to test this without writing any code. Uh, now it's time to send the request. Here is the request sent, and I get the reply. Can you see here, created? Here is the header. I have one extra header here called location. And it tells me here is the location of the newly created item. So I can take this location, <coughs> stick it in here, okay, and do a, a get send, and I will basically get the newly created one. And by the way, the ID is six, was generated by the server side. It's clear? So Postman is used to test a REST service using HTTP verbs other than get. You can use post for adding, put for updating, and so on. So you see here, I have another URL, uh, another verb, uh, another route, here, post if you want to add. I have another one, put. Put is for update. And I will send it to hero that slash, let's say if I want to update hero six, I send it to he slash hero slash six. And that will call the hero, ab update hero. Have a look at this, update hero. And basically same thing. The hero will be in the body of the request. I just go and grab it from there. And then I call my repository to save it. If everything goes OK, I'll send 200 OK. If some error happens, I send 500 to the client. OK? This is the put. Now the delete, same thing. If somebody, if the request came with the, with the delete HTTP verb, I will send the request to the delete hero. OK? Here, in the, in the delete, I will go to uh, get the ID to be deleted from the URL. 
You remember the URL has hero slash six, for example. I'll go to that ID and pass it on to the repository to, to, to do the delete. If everything goes okay, I, find, I send 200, otherwise I send 500, okay? So let us test, let, let us test uh, put, which basically I will take this hero, okay? And I will go to uh, put, go to the body, basically paste this one there, and I will change whatever, something. Whatever, all right, all right, change something. And then I'll do send. If everything goes okay, hopefully. So hero updated successfully, 200 okay. Now if I go and do another get, Ah, uh, six, sorry, do a get. And you see here, this one has changed, okay? If I no longer need this entry, I go to use delete, delete here, send. See here, 200 okay. If I try to delete again, this is not well implemented. It should say not found, but it's fine. Uh, you get the idea. So I use this postman to test my REST services that, that are properly implemented. Now it's time, we, we are not going to give this postman and to the users to do their work. <coughs> it's time now to have a, a proper user interface to make this functionality available to, the, to our users, okay? So let me show you that journey again very quickly. Here is my, here is my uh, HTML page, if you remember. Uh, let me show you the, the final product and show you how we get there. Here is hero.html. This is the final, the final product of our implementation. Now if I do add, have a look. I do add. I get this nice form. Let's say test, test, all right, and submit. So when I submitted, I basically called, the, sent a post request to the server side, and the server handle it, handles it. So let us look at the ad, what happened in the ad. Here it is. So first of all, on the HTML page, definitely I have a button there called add hero. And that button, in that button, I call this function add hero. It's not the best way, by the way, but anyway, it's fine. I have, a, I have a JavaScript function called add hero in my JS hero. The client side script, I put it in a folder called JS. And I'm adding the client side script to my page, js.hero. So in this file, I have a function called add hero. Here is the add hero. Okay? So this add hero, all it does. On my HTML page, there is a template, handlebar template. I kind of a little bit explained this handlebar before. I will show you shortly. I get the template, I compile it, and then I generate the HTML out of it and place it in this element here called hero form. Then I use a little bit of JavaScript, jQuery UI, to make it as a pop-up form. So let me take it a little bit slowly, especially those of you who have not been here before in the previous lecture. So here is the, uh, here is the form. Have a look at the form. So first of all, handlebars is a library that allows me to create templates. I feed the temp, I have a template, I have some data, an object, and I can basically pass the object to the template to generate the full HTML. So instead of creating HTML by code, which is not very good, I have a template and I have the object and I merge the two to, to generate the HTML. So here is the template. To create a handlebar template, I put it inside a script tag and I give it an ID. Why did I give it an ID? So I can refer to it from the script. So this is nothing but a form. Have a look. This is a form. It has inputs, an input for name, 
an input for code and, in, and a drop down for the type. Now, this form is very powerful. You can use it either for edit or for add. Same form. I don't want to create two forms. Have a look in the user interface. Edit is exactly the same as add. Because why should I create two forms? So that same form is used, uh, is used for both scenarios. So if I get, basically when I create the template, I will give it an object. Because in the case of add, I'm giving it an empty object, this will be empty. This will be basically nothing in the value. And because I am sending an empty code, this will be empty. But if it is update, you get the, you get the values that I passed to the form. Now, when I, this, is, this will not be visible. This is a template in the page. So I grab the template. This is the name of the template. Can you see here the ID of the template? So the way I do it, this is according to the handlebar documentation. It's not like something cr very creative. I go to, uh, I ask jQuery, please go to this element and give me the HTML of that element. So what do, what do I have here? The template HTML. Then I need to compile it. This is what handlebar people told me to do, compile it. It gives me another object. I call it here hero template. And I pass to it the object. Because I am adding, I don't have the object yet. So I pass an empty one. And then this will generate some HTML, and I place the HTML in this hero form element. You see in my HTML here, I have an element called hero form. Okay? Now, I wanted to make it nice and show this form as a pop-up as a pop-up form, a model form that comes up. Sorry. Uh, which, uh, no, the, the, the one that triggered the form? No, the, the one that triggered the form is already here. In this one, this is the add. When the add is clicked, I will call add hero, okay? Yes, when I, when I click submit, that's another event handler, okay? So there are two parts here. When I click the add, the form will pop up. I'll enter the information, then I submit. When I submit, I will push do a post request to the server side to save it to the file, okay? Now, to, to be able to do this pop-up, there is a, another library called jQuery UI. Just do Google jQuery UI. It has a lot of features. One of them that I really like and use very often, if I want to have a pop-up form, I can use that uh, jQuery UI. Uh, I, I'll show you how that pop-up form works. Very simple. I go to a particular element, in this case a div, and call this function dialog. That's it. And I give some couple of parameters. I say, this is the height I want, this is the width, uh, this is the title. I want it to be model. Model means the form will be there, the user cannot do anything else until that form is closed. It's a block in the user until they fill up the form, either submit or cancel. They cannot do anything else. Here I define two buttons in that form. This is the submit button and the cancel button. For the, sub, for the cancel, I just close the form. I do nothing. If, if the user clicks submit, what do I do? Save and close. Here is the save. Have a look at the save. This is the save. In the save, this is how you deal with forms using JavaScript. I go to each element of the form it has an element called name, hero type, and code. I read the value that the user has entered and construct an object from it. Can you see it? And then I will be, I, I, I'm intending to do a post. This is where the post will be sent to, and the verb, the HTTP verb I will be using is post. And then I will explain, this is for edit. So for add, add and edit are exactly the same. For add, I use post, and for edit, I use put. Now, how do I know whether it's add or edit? Any trick? The URL. No, no. I need to decide the URL based on whether it is add or edit. How do I know it is add or it is edit? 
from the hero ID. If the hero ID is empty, what does that mean? It's a new, it's add. Yes. If the hero ID is there, what does that mean? It's updates. And by the way, uh, HTML gives you this trick. Have a look at this little trick here. Uh, here is the template. There is this hidden thing, hidden input. This is where this hidden input is very, very useful. If I, if I, if I pass in an object to edit, of course this one will be, have some value. Otherwise, they will be, this will be empty. And that's why, that is exactly what I do here. I read that ID. If it is empty, if it is not empty, it means it is an edit. And I, in that case, I will change the method to put, and I will add this ID to the URL, to the URL, okay? You, you get the idea. And then I use fetch to, put, to push everything to the server side. So f here it is. Push, uh, sorry, what is it, fetch? Yes, fetch, this is the URL I will be pushing to. This is the method I will be using, either post for add or put for update. This is the header. Remember the header content type is uh, a application slash JSON. And here is the body of the request. Exactly the same as the Postman UI. I provide the URL I'm posting to, what type of verb I am using, what is the header, like telling the server, by the way, I am sending you uh, JSON, and then here is the body. When, when everything is fine, when I, when I submit and it's successfully done, I'll go and refresh the page to show you the new heroes. Is clear? Or is a bit, you need to practice this to really appreciate it. But this is the basic idea. Now for delete is exactly the same. Sorry, the last thing I will show you is the delete. Uh, can somebody see delete? Yes, here is delete. I ask you for confirmation. If you say yes, all I do, I create, I do, uh, I will, this is the URL I will send the request to. The method I will use is delete. Okay? And then when, every, when, it's, when it comes back, when, when, it, when the delete is successful, I will delete the, U, I will delete the row on the, on the HTML table. Remember there is, here it is. Here's the HTML. When I say delete, you see, after, after it is deleted on the file, I also delete it from the HTML table. So delete, it, it asks me to confirm, yes, it disappears from the UI. If you want to do it, using jQuery is very, very easy. You say, this is the button that raised the event. I say, give me the closest, the closest TR to this button, which means the, the line, the row, that button belongs to, and I say, go ahead and remove it. So in this one line, I basically remove that element. Okay, it's clear? All right, so basically, inshallah, try to go through this, try to familiarize yourself, try to, hopefully you're doing some progress on your homework, try to apply this to your, pro, to your homework, and tomorrow, try not to miss the lab.